Hello everyone! Christmas is just around the corner and it seems to be a good idea to be ready with some presents in advance. Therefore, here, today, I want to show you how to knit a Santa hat. In the tutorial you get to know how to do some calculations, because for this project you want to use any yarn you like. This class is perfect for beginners and there are no difficult techniques, but still some things to learn, and I guarantee it will be easy enough. I'm pretty sure if you follow all instructions, you will reach great results. Feel free to use just one color if you find color work to be too complicating, or you simply prefer one color hat. You can also variate the length of the hat. It is all up to you. All in all, you need about 150 meters or 50-100 gram of red color and a bit of white one. Cannot say more precisely as it pretty much depends on the yarn you use and the size you choose. If you hesitate about how big needles you need, check if possible the label of the yarn. Normally the factory recommends the range of needle sizes that are most appropriate for this kind of yarn. Before we start knitting, let us choose the yarn and make a sample. That is a crucial part, because in this video I don't give you uh, the exact amount of stitches you need to cast on. The reason is that I want you to use any yarn you have in your stash. To measure the gauge, I do a small sample, about 12-15 cm wide. Here I need to count how many stitches in 10 cm I have. Eventually my gauge equals 20 stitches in 10 cm, which means 2 stitches in 1 cm. The number of needles is 4.5 mm. So I've got here two main numbers. First, how many stitches I have in 10 cm. Second, the size of the needles. Basically, you need a circle needle of 40 cm, the main size or the size you have used for making a sample, minus 4.5 mm. Then circle needle 14, 40 cm, that is 1.5 or one size smaller. I take 3.5 mm. As the top of the head will become very narrow, I want you to use either the Technique Magic Loop or Double Pointed Needles. I prefer Double Pointed Needles, therefore I also include them in my list of the tools. Here take a plastic marker, one crotch to weave loose ends, and a pom-pom maker to make a pom-pom to decorate the head. Using my sample, I will show you all calculations but you take your yarn, your needles and count them all yourself. First of all, I open my document with a head size chart. You find the link in the description below. All numbers are just for reference. If you want to be more precise, measure that head you want to make a head for. So of course you can measure your own head if you want to need this head for yourself. I take the smallest number for a newborn baby. The approximate head circumference is 32-36 cm. For a better fit, I subtract 4 cm from this number and get, uh, let's say, 28-32 cm. I take 30 cm as an average number. Then I multiply 30 by 2, because in each cm I have 2 stitches, according to my gauge and get 60 stitches. Here I also want to have an even number, therefore if I had got the number like 59, 61, 63, I would have rounded it to 58, 60 or 62. Besides, I add one stitch to join the round. In total, 61 stitches to cast on. I'm going to start my head with the rib and therefore need to have smaller needles. I take 3.5 mm needle. Just to remind you, my main needles are 4.5 mm. So I take 3.5 mm needle and cast on 61 stitches. When all stitches are on the needle, I need to join the circle. 
Here I will use that additional stitch I've already cast on. I make sure that the row is not twisted anywhere, then move the first stitch to the right side and move the previous stitch over it. Now my circle is ready. Here I can also tighten the thread to avoid a gap in between stitches. Ok, now I'm ready to knit the one knit, one purl stitch rib. Next 3-4 cm I'm going to alternate knit and purl stitches. One knit, one purl, one knit, one purl and so on. Nothing really special here, just all simple stitches well known for every beginner. Now the rib is ready and it is time to start reading the first chart. As chart 1 has a repeating part consisting of 5 stitches, I want my total number of stitches to be divided by 5 without remainder. Fortunately, I have 60 stitches and no need to add or subtract any stitches. Let me show an example if you have, for example, 62 stitches. The closest number divided by 5 is 60 or 65. Here I have two options, either decrease 2 stitches or increase 3 stitches. Both options are equal, you do any of them. How to count where do increases or decreases? For example, I have 58 stitches and need to do 2 increases. I divide 58 into 2 and get 29. So I will do 2 decreases. One after every 29 stitches of the row. I do increase the next way. As soon as I reach the place where I need to do increases, I make a loop like this. From stretch and twist it. This is my increase. For example, I have 63 stitches and need to decrease 3 stitches. I divide 63 by 3 and get 21 stitches. It means I will need 2 stitches together every 20th and 21st stitches. Use your numbers to do calculations. Now I'm back to my chart 1. Here you can see the repeating part in which I read right to left, bottom up, according to the written numbers. I start from row 1 that is just plain white. In this row, if necessary, I also do increases or decreases we were talking just a moment ago. Now I'm by the row 3 with the two colors. I take a white thread and put it over another finger. So both threads are separated in order to avoid entangling. It is also important to control the tension, uh, otherwise stitches will be too loose. So I keep both threads this way and start knitting. Two red stitches, one white. 2 red, then repeat 2 red, 1 white, 2 red. I repeat these 5 stitches over and over again until the end of the row, then I start the next row.
Here I have one red, three white, one red, one red, white, 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 one red. Or it can be one red, three white, two red, three white, and so on. When the whole pattern is ready, I start chart 2. Here again, I need to recount the number of stitches and adjust them to the chart. The repeating part has 8 stitches. The closest number that divides by 8 without a remainder is 64. I have only 60. It means that while knitting the first row, I am going to do 4 increases. If I need to do 4 increases, I divide 60 stitches by 4 and get 15. After every 50th stitch, I will do an increase. I use the white thread as the first row is a plain white and now I'm counting 15 stitches. Ok, 15 stitches are ready and next I lift up the loop. That is the first increase. Then I count the next 15 stitches and do increase number 2. and so on until I get all four increases. Then I keep knitting, alternating white and red according to the chart. Meet you when the chart is ready. The whole chart is ready. From this point I use only red color and keep knitting the height of the hat. I cut off the white thread and will leave the loose end afterward. In the size chart I find the height that I want to knit for my size. Let's say it is 12 cm, so I will stop when 12 cm of the hat are ready. Now the main part of the hat is ready and I start narrowing it. I will do it the next way. 
Here also need to do some calculations, but feel free to adjust it the way you like. There are no very strict rules. So I know that the highest part of the head I want to get will equal 12 cm or 6 cm of one side. In my case, 12 cm converted into stitches is 24 stitches. Now I have 64. I subtract 24 from 64 and get 40. As I do two decreases in the same row, I divide 40 into 2 and get 20. It means I need to do two decreases 20 times. You can either do these two decreases every fourth row. I find this frequency is good enough. Or you can count how often you need to do decreases if you already know the length you want to have. Let's say I want to get 20 cm more. I need to count how many rows I have in 10 cm using the part I've already finished. For example, I had 28 rows in 10 cm, therefore 2.8 rows in 1 cm. If I want to have a 22 cm length, I convert the length into rows and get 61.6 rows. Now I want to calculate how often I do decreases and divide 61.6 by 20 times and get about 3. It means I do decreases every third row. If you don't like calculations or it seems to be too complicating, just do decrease every fourth row. All decreases I'm going to do will be by the beginning of the row where I have a marker. Let us do the first decreases. I do one knit stitch, then I want to knit stitches together with the right inclination, so left to right. In this case I use front loops. Then I knit the whole row until I have three stitches left. Three stitches left here and I want to knit two stitches together again, but this time with the left inclination. To do it, I need to turn the stitches the way it will be convenient to use their back loops. I turn them, insert the needle right to left and knit them together. The last stitch is just a neat stitch. Ok, now I have the first row with decreases out of 20 done. Then I need 3 rows without changes. The fourth row I do again with 2 decreases at the beginning of the row and in the end. I also have one neat stitch in the very beginning and one neat stitch in the very end. Let me do all 20 rows with decreases. So I do decrease, then need 3 rows and do another decrease 20 times in total. I meet you when I'm ready with it. As you see, here I already have double point needles, not circle, but you can use any of them that you find convenient. Here I have the last 24 stitches. Now I'm going to finish my work by decreasing them. It will not be something special, I just need every two stitches together and do it the whole row. When I finish, I have only 12 stitches left. I cut the thread and pull the end through every loop. I 
I can do it twice if loops are too loose. The next step is to take a crochet and pull the loose end to the wrong side of the head. Finally, the head is ready and I only need to make some decorations. I like pompons and I find it really easy to do with these pompon makers. I found these ones on AliExpress, very cheap but extremely useful. I cannot say exactly which shop is the best there, but you can check it by yourself. There are four different sizes of pompon makers. I find this one fits best to my head and now I show you how I do this pompon. One pompon maker consists of two symmetrical parts that can be unfolded. I keep them open side by side. I take my yarn and start wrapping it evenly around. When the first part is ready, I do the same with another part. Now it is time to connect them. Here you see small white parts that are actually quite fragile, but easy repairable. I just put them back to keep sides together. Then I take scissors and carefully cut the thread along in between these two circles. Then I take some uh, thread, it should be long enough, maybe about 20-25 cm, and here I want to make tight knots to keep all this mess. I do 3-4-5 knots and tighten them as much as possible. Therefore, if you take a thread that falls apart after tightening, you definitely have to find another one. When I see that my pom-pom is well kept, I take something to cover my table, take again scissors and start forming a ball, cutting everything that sticks out. It might take a while as I want my pom-pom to be as perfect as possible. Not that perfect maybe, but good enough for the head. Here I have two loose ends and I'm going to use them to connect the pom-pom to the head. With the help of the crochet, I pull one of the ends a bit farther from the very top and pull it inside. Then 
The same with the second one. I choose the place approximately on the opposite side of the top and pull this end inside. On the wrong side I make a knot and now my pompon sits very well on the top. The head is ready. Just needs blocking and maybe very careful ironing. If you use acrylic or another synthetic yarn, be twice careful ironing. I hope that was an easy project or you've learned something new on the way. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to leave some likes and subscribe to the channel.